My fellow Americans, hello again. It's great to be back speaking to you over weekly radio. I hope this is the first of many broadcasts to come. I've missed these weekly visits. Just 12 days ago, I went on television to ask your support for a bipartisan tax reform and spending reduction bill. As you'll recall, I told you I had to swallow hard to support that bill myself. I didn't like the idea of revenue increases and still don't. But to get the spending cuts, which I think most of us want and which we must have to reduce deficits, keep interest rates going down, and get the unemployed back to work, we had to accept the increased revenues. But I argued then, and I repeat now, most of the revenue part of that bill was not really a tax increase at all, but a reform of existing tax laws. The tax cut passed last year remains the biggest tax cut in history. Even with the $99 billion increase, the tax cut over the next three years will amount to $335 billion. The savings to the average American family this year is $400. Next year, it will be $788. Even more important, however, we'll reduce the deficits over these next three years by $378.5 billion. If we stay on course and work together, we can look to a day when we can start reducing that trillion-dollar debt. And I think you like that working together idea. I received a letter just the other day from a lady in Florida. I hope she won't mind if I share it with you. Patricia Morgan writes that she sees unity among us again, the kind of unity we had during World War II. We Americans all pulling together. That's what America is. That is our power. Well, Patricia Morgan, I couldn't agree more. American power is reasserting itself. Day before yesterday, the Federal Reserve lowered the discount rate to 10%, the lowest it's been in two years. Double-digit inflation, once 12.4%, has been for the last seven months only 5.4%. The prime interest rate, 21.5% a year and a half ago, is now 13.5% and very probably going lower. The other day, the Security Savings and Loan of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, made $100 million available for home mortgages at 11.9% interest. And we've just seen a week-long breaking of virtually every record on Wall Street for trade in stocks and bonds. No, we're not out of the woods yet. But we can maintain this momentum, reopen factory gates, rebuild America, and make this country number one again. Not overnight, of course, but slowly, surely, we can do it. It all hinges on one question. Do we as a nation have the unshakable determination to get federal spending under control once and for all? With 20 unbalanced budgets in the last 21 years, the burden of proof is on us. We need a constitutional check against red ink spending. Four or five of you support this idea. The Senate recently passed a bill that takes us one step closer to such a constitutional amendment. It is now up to the House leadership to make sure the full House votes on this issue as soon as possible in this session of the Congress. If not, you and the voters will have an opportunity in November to make your feelings heard about that. On the subject of spending, though, I can't wait till November. A few days ago, a supplemental appropriations bill to fund several programs and agencies for the rest of this fiscal year was sent to me for signature or veto. The legislation contained funding to meet payrolls in the Department of Defense and other federal agencies. It also included a vital new program we've sought that is essential to our hemispheric solidarity and security, the Caribbean Basin Initiative. But it also contained funding for several things I vetoed already as being unnecessary and was almost a billion dollars over budget for domestic programs. We've gone on record as committed to reduce projected deficits by $380 billion over the next three years. I believe that commitment begins with holding the line on a budget that has little more than a month to run. So, even though it means delay in getting legislation I believe is vital to our nation's welfare, I have therefore vetoed that supplemental appropriations bill. Until next week, thanks for listening and God bless you. My fellow Americans, I'm glad to join all of you on this final weekend of the summer. Family vacations are now ending, kids are going back to school, and communities all over the nation are preparing for Labor Day parades. And, by the way, this year marks the 100th anniversary of the first Labor Day parade. It isn't true that I was in that first parade. I've just read about it. 
On Monday, we celebrate the dignity and productivity of America's working people. Our country has prospered because we're a nation of workers, and today there are nearly 100 million at work. More than 100 million, according to the unadjusted figures, and 99.8 million in the seasonally adjusted figures. Now, if that confuses you, well, I'm confused too. Unfortunately, on this Labor Day, however, too many of our fellow citizens are unemployed. That's a terrible word, unemployed. It means hardship, uncertainty, frustration, helplessness. Many who are unemployed feel caught up in something they don't understand and over which they have no control. And they're right. It's not the fault of the laid-off fellow in Detroit that he's out of work. It's not his fault the autos aren't rolling down the assembly line. It's not the fault of the unemployed mother in Delaware that the printing plant closed down, throwing her out of a job. The fact is, unemployment has been gaining on us for years. Since 1976, the unemployment rate in this country has averaged over 7%, far higher than in earlier post-war years. It was only 2.9% in 1953. I'm convinced that in these last few decades, the increased intervention by government in the marketplace, tax policies that took too great a percentage of overall earnings, plus burdensome and unnecessary regulations, reduced economic growth and kept us from creating new jobs for newcomers entering the job market. Today, the unemployment rate is 9.8%, and still, the number of people with jobs is a higher percentage of those of working age than we had in times of full employment, higher than in 1953, when, as I said, unemployment was only 2.9%. I guess what I'm trying to point out is that our unemployment problem is due to more than just the present recession. We must not only work our way out of the recession, we must adopt policies that will stimulate economic growth and create new jobs for the increased numbers entering the job market. This is the goal of our economic recovery program. Yes, it marks a decided turnaround from government tax and spend policies of the past four decades, deliberately so, and I believe it'll work. Indeed, the signs are there that it's beginning to work. Last week, I called attention to the decline in interest rates, 21.5% down to 13.5%, inflation down from 12.4% to 5.4% since the first of the year. A family of four with a $15,000 income has $1,000 more in purchasing power than it would have if inflation had stayed at 12.4%. I know this is hard to see because prices keep going up, but they aren't going up as fast or as much as they were. What we're all waiting for is that zero weight, when the stay where they are or even drop a little. Well, that too is what our program is designed to accomplish. And the leading economic indicators by which we know whether the economy is improving or getting worse have climbed for the fourth month in a row. That hasn't happened for a long time. Clearly, the most important question now before us is whether we have the will and determination to hold our course. The next test will come when the Congress returns to Washington and decides whether to sustain my veto of a supplemental spending bill that would drive up spending once again. I hope we can work together to develop a more responsible bill. In the meantime, I hope you'll join me this Labor Day weekend in saluting the workers of America. And while we're doing that, perhaps we can spare a moment of prayer for some workers in another country. Here in America, on Labor Day, we hold parades to support the principles of freedom. In Poland a few days ago, the people peacefully gathered to mark the second anniversary of Solidarity, a labor movement which revived our hope that nonviolent change and basic human rights could come to a closed communist community. Their parade was met with guns, concussion grenades, tear gas, and water cannons. As we attend our parades and picnics, let us remember how fortunate we are to be a free people. Let us remember the handwritten prayer that was recently found in an alcove of a Polish church. It read, Thank you, Lord, that into this temple I may bring verses. It's the only place in our homeland where every Pole feels free and where he may evoke his pain. <clears throat> I beg you to give my country the strength to endure. Well, let us in America be thankful for the strength of our free labor movement. May it long endure. Thanks for listening. God bless you. I'll be back next week at this same time.
ask me why I said community instead of society. I don't know. <laughs> Okay. What was that? The sirens? <laughs> I don't know. Traffic <laughs> I think that we should have done the crime message. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it sounds like forced I could hear it. Yeah. 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 Forest Defire? Uh, oh, good Lord. Look at the horizon. They say there's one in Vivid Park. 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 In Los Angeles, they said yesterday. Well, if that was Forest Defire. Here in America, on Labor Day, we hold parade. How was the wind noise? Went over shortly on the wood. Huh? Went over shortly. Oh, I see. Never heard a thing. Didn't hear the sirens? I'll be down. How about the bus? Didn't hear that either. Oh, well, you were talking really close to the microphone, which meant that nothing else got on. Dubbed in. Dubbed in. Bird airplanes. And they were on 1400. It was on. Alright. Uh, yeah. I dry this week. Uh, yeah, much better. Yeah. Yeah. That's clear enough. I'm still eating my... Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor, the eye doctor, he said there isn't anything you can do about it. He said it takes about two weeks. To be, well, it's two weeks today. So it's still mm -hmm. week. But he said maybe you can speed it up a little if you uh, ate papaya. He said, don't ask me mm -hmm. why, but he said, so I've been on a papaya <laughs> diet for breakfast. But you know, there, there is something. I heard someone in the red where they, they're using some extract yeah. of papaya yeah. and yeah. using it as an injection for yeah. people with okay. certain yeah. kinds of bad backs. Yeah. And I know that they put it up now in tablets mm -hmm. and it's uh, advertised as, a, as an aid to digestion. So maybe that's what it was. Maybe it's got some. It's like aloe vera. What's aloe vera? Some cactus. Oh. Gel. You know that patch of cactus up in here, that's the only cactus up here in all these mountains. Yeah. 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 See, this house was built in 1872. And uh, uh, this porch part around it. <laughs> <laughs> Name house. But it used to be a self-sustaining farm. I got an article in here about the place. And they, they raised corn and beans. They had... They had uh, vines and made their own wine, and it was a totally, it was a subsistence farm. And I always looked at that cactus up there, and I don't know this much about tequila, but I suspect <laughs> <laughs> cactus from which you make tequila, and they took care of that also. But it, it just isn't any place in these mountains. Saturday night entertainment. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Saturday night entertainment. Yeah. Self-sustaining fun, too, for it. Are you going right into the Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, forest service. Uh, we'll be watching you for a while. Yeah. 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 That's the top of the see that? Uh, yeah, no, I see it. But see, the, you see where the grass is on top? Yeah. Here? It's about two and a half miles. Yeah, yeah last night at the barbecue, a couple of them complained to me, why didn't we go riding earlier? Because they said they could go home after we. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Um, it's also nicer in the morning because there's not so much heat waves. The heat waves make it very blurry. Yeah. It'll be nice in the fall and the winter time. Well, gee, I, I'll tell you, the guy that's been doubling me on the ride, <laughs> he's worried that my... <laughs> it's any colder, you need to put makeup on. <laughs> the other day, we must have given him trouble, though, the first day of it. Two up here. Yes, it's really bad. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So I had to figure out that <laughs> right, we wouldn't have lived. Yeah, right, right, right. We didn't know in advance. We were all yeah, set. You raised those four and we'll find out at the exact time. I, tried it, I tracked it, but I, I figured out a guy that kept us in the woods all the time. Shame. <laughs> <laughs> probably didn't get much. You read the White Horse? Yeah. That's what the Portini gave you? Yeah. Um, yeah. How's it doing? He's good, right? Oh, yeah, he was trained. Was he yeah. trained? Well, yeah, he was trained. Is that him? Kind of oh, okay. That's right. And uh, the other horses, you know. They kind of train him to come out of the 
He was more problem when you were on the ground. He was on his back. So he's back and fine. So he was on the ground and you had to watch out of there. He was bitten and kicked or something. And uh, I understand that that is, you know, so you know, the story of her rearing up and everything. And that's the macho thing that he's going to die then. <laughs> A lot of tape on this. Can't be too much longer. Twenty-two minutes right now.